You're locked in with the innovators. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. What's going on? You locked in with the Innovators YouTube. You already know I got the best interviews right here, man. I got my guy, Ghetto Curry, in the studio. What's popping, bro? Yeah, yo, what's good with you, bro? Chilling, chilling, chilling. How you doing? I'm good, man. Blessed. How you? I'm doing pretty good. It's a, it's a good day out here today. Not too hot, and it's not too cold, <laughs> at least for right now. <laughs> it's that day weather, man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, just to get into it, let the people know where you're from and where they can find your social media. Yo, uh, I'm from Richmond, California. You can find me at Ghetto Curry, uh, IG, um, Ghetto Curry, Twitter, um, Damn Dam Two Six or Six Two Four, Twitter, other one, um, uh, TikTok, Ghetto Curry. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I got. I mean, I, I'm gonna have to ask you the name Ghetto Curry. How did that even come about? <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, shit, it came from uh, just hooping, you know what I mean? I'm not a hooper or nothing like that, but uh, I'll be just shooting threes and shit like that. Oh, I got you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not going to, I ain't going to hit no layup. I ain't going to dunk it on you. But, but if you, you can shoot it, I'm, I'm going to bust that three on you. You feel me? So niggas call me, you know, Ghetto Curry. Because you pull up and shoot this shot. <laughs> <laughs> What's your significance with the number 26? Uh, shit, favorite number. I've always had that number. Um, shit, we did this interview on the 26th, yeah. you feel me? But um, on some like deeper meaning sh type of shit, not to get too deep, but it's like a God number, you feel me? It's like two six represents like um, like completion. So just on some other type of shit, um, I've always been gravitated towards the number two six. I'm a twin. Oh, for feel real? Me? Yeah, I'm born January 5th. So one plus five is six. You feel me? Plus, I got a twin brother, so I was like, that's two six right there. You feel me? How has life been like as a twin? Uh, shit. It's been smooth. Like, best friend, worst enemy. You know what I mean? Like, but it's like we kind of psychic almost. Like, I can feel his pain. I can feel what he's going through. Um, if I need some inspiration, like, if I'm having, like, a writer's block, he would just send me a beat or something like that, and I'm just writing back to it. You feel me? So it's like... It's like having a best friend. It's like having another version of you. That's, yeah. that's really what it is, duality. No, nah, that's tight. Yeah. When did you realize to you that the, the number 26 was special to you? Shit. I understood it back in, like, high school. Like, it, it just always been around me. You feel me? I didn't even want to get into, like, where I stayed at. It was just two six, But, um... Shit, my jersey number in high school was 26. Oh, two okay. six. Yeah. You feel me? And I didn't even choose that number. It was the, the coach just like, hey, we got this number left. You choose from 38, 42, 26. Yeah. And he's like, 26 just sounds better. You feel me? But uh, yeah, I always fuck with 26. What was it like for you growing up in Richmond? <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, bittersweet. You feel me? Like, uh, it, it's it's I love Richmond. I love I love Richmond. I fuck with anybody that's from Richmond. Like I don't really get into the politics of where you're from. You from North, South, Central. Like I don't really give a fuck. Like you from Richmond. If I see you in LA, you from Richmond. I fuck with you. If I see you in Atlanta, DC, New York, once I find out you from Richmond, I fuck with you because you kind of understand the cloth. Um. It's like almost everybody kind of with the shit in Richmond, but not really with the shit. We just kind of about getting, depending on where you're from, it's about getting your money, yeah. about family, um, and just kind of staying out the way and, and keeping it tucked. But Richmond, Richmond cool. Yeah. I think, I mean, you go through your traumas. You go through seeing death at an early age and shit like that. You go through like corruption. You go through all type of shit, but like. I wouldn't really trade it. I got family in Oakland. I got family in the city. I got family all over. But yeah. like, they be like, you a Richmond nigga. Da, 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 da. There's a lot I mean? of uh, stipulations that come with being a Richmond nigga. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Like, I got a lion from stereotype. Berkeley. <laughs> you can't stereotype everybody. Right, you right, know what I mean? right, everybody, right. everybody from the city, like, you feel me? Like, I might always feel like people is different. Like, yeah. It's, it's just, it is different. But it's like, that's why I was like, some places, like, if I meet, like, a like a broad, if I'm going out, 
they be like, where you from? I'm like, Richmond, I don't know. If you're out the state, they don't know where that's from. So they I'm think like, Virginia. Yeah, exactly. They think Virginia, that's the first thing they think of. You feel me? But if you out here, you say you're from Richmond, they're like, oh, hell nah. I don't fuck with you. It's like, yeah, it's like, damn, what? Like, they, think, they think you shady just because yeah. you're Richmond. Like, <laughs> you got to get a chance to get to know me. Right, right. right. Nah, I, they, they got to at least get, give us a chance and have yeah. a conversation with us before they make it all that uh, jud yeah, yeah. the judgment. Don't whatnot. judge the book. Don't judge the cover. Yeah. You me? <laughs> How did you grow up, though? Uh, was your parents around? Like, What was that like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I grew up, um, I come from like a house of seven. So really? like, yeah, my pops and mom, they still married to this day. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. And uh they got seven kids together. Um, I'm from the I don't you know, I'm from the hood, so like it was kinda strange. I didn't really realize that a lot of niggas didn't have no father figure until they'll see my pops pick me up from school or they see my pops telling me like, Hey, you need to chill out or discipline and type of shit. And like I kinda noticed I was a little bit ostracized. But having a father figure, you feel me? Like they kind of would show envy, or they would like um, kind of just treat me in a, in a sense different. Uh, but it was just it's, it's a balance between having a father and a mother. You feel me? So like it was just pretty grounded. It's like a tribe. Yeah. I got four sisters, three brothers. Yeah, that's me? crazy. Big family for sure. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? And grandparents. They got eleven kids. Damn. Yeah, average like five cousins each. Yeah. You feel me? That's, that's tight. <laughs> yeah, so like a tribe, you know what I mean? Yeah. So and we really tight, you know, I mean? we kinda close until people die and shit like that. But yeah, yeah I, I grew up, you know, family, pops, kinda kept me out of the bullshit. I uh, tried to keep me out of the bullshit yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. As you your know? parents should, for sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, you know. And so pops, you know, he taught taught me how to drive and shit like that. Taught one of my homeboys how to drive because he ain't had nobody and shit like that. So it was like, hey, get behind the wheel. You get behind the wheel. You feel yeah. me? So <laughs> I fuck with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's uh, I I like to hear that. That's definitely uh, yeah, that, that's good. Like you feel me? And I, everybody doesn't have that, you know. So I right. feel like you know, it kind of make it, make you appreciate it more. It's like damn, like that's something. Yeah, true. I I mean, a lot of times in the back, it's, it's a unique thing. You feel right. me? Like right. having your your father around. You feel me? Oh yeah. A lot of people, and uh, I I mean, I've done a lot of you know I've done a lot of interviews. Some, some people would say I, people have told me like you know nobody right. in the whole hood had their dad around, exactly. so it was damn near him. Right. Nobody right. thought it was no. You feel me? It was realistic. You feel, you feel me? me? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like yeah, nah, I, I I rock with what you saying for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, hold on, I'm sorry. I don't want to give praise to my mom, too. You yeah. Know, like, <laughs> <laughs> she has seven kids. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that's a lot for sure. You know what I mean? She ain't really had to work. You feel me? So, you know, I got to give her respect. Always she, shout out to the moms for yeah, sure. Yeah, always. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just because. <laughs> How did you get into making music? Uh, Shit, I've been doing music since I was fucking, it's in my genes in a sense. Um, it started off when I was like four, bro, be honest with you. I got a cousin um, named Mac Arthur. Um, he does R&B, uh, he moved to Atlanta. I got another cousin who um, who does like radio. He used to do like Wild 94. Um, shout out right now. Uh, Shout out Robert. He used to kind of engineer and ghostwrite. Not ghostwrite, but just engineer with Keisha Cole. And um, i just always been around music. So when it, we had like a church in Oakland and some shit, we used to go to that shit. And uh, like one day, I used to just watch hella Snoop Dogg and shit. And uh, as a kid, I was like four, I started like freestyling. Like, like mumbling. Like... I couldn't put no words together because my vocabulary wasn't there and shit like that, but I would just mumble rap before there was even a such thing. And um, all my family and just, they was like, hey, you got like a dope ass flow. Yeah. But you ain't got no words because you hella yeah. young and shit. <laughs> you feel me? So I just kept developing that and I never really wrote. I used to just freestyle. And then uh, back in like 07, 08, I used to kind of battle more so. And uh, I was, I fuck with like URL. I fuck with um, Lil Wayne, of course. So I just kind of just started to just kind of copy the the styles of Wayne and fucking uh, Jay Z, Mac Dre, Keep the Sneak, yeah, and 
just kind of kept that cadence and then just started going there and just building my own character, you feel me? So yeah, I started at four, then it was at 07, and then I used to just kind of be behind the scenes. And then just recently, I mean, I've always wrote, but like just recently, like probably 09, uh, 2019, I was just like, all right, let me just make my own project. I was working on for like two years. Mm -hmm. It was called Damn. And then Kendrick dropped it. And yeah. I called Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and so I had to redo the whole situation. And it was it's kind of weird because it was in the same type of style. Like it was the same type of like create creative space of when I was working on it. I was pissed because I was yeah. working on that shit for like three to four years. Bro. Yeah. And that nigga dropped that shit. And I was just like, ah, oh, bruh, I can't even like drop it. I gotta remix the remix. Yeah. You feel me? So yeah, recently, 2019, 18, that's when I got really serious into it. Everybody was fucking with it. Uh, they was fucking with it in D.C. They was fucking with it in the East Coast. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, but out here it'd be kind of weird, to be honest, because it's like, not like typical. Yeah, yeah, it's not the typical style. Um, and also, like, niggas be kind of hating and shit like that. Like, they don't really understanding how the trained ear works. It's like when you're used to hearing something that's familiar, you fuck with it off the top. But if it's something that might be a little bit different, you just automatically don't fuck with it. Like you reject it. That's like, it's like new food or something like that. You feel me? So, now I, I do um, agree with you on that. Sometimes, even for me, if something's like not a uh, like typical of what I usually listen to, I gotta listen to it a few times before I really get right. my opinion on right. it. Because sometimes with the first listen, you're kind of like ah, uh -huh. depending on what what you're going through that day, your right. mood, like right. you know, it right. might throw you off a little bit. But once you Give it a couple more listens. You like okay, yeah. like I actually like rock with this for sure. Right, 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 right. Why do you feel that? Uh, how you work around something like that? You're not having, you know, this this stereotypical mm -hmm. bass sound per se. Yeah, I I try to I try to I appreciate the bass sound. You feel me? So like I try to incorporate something that's bass element to it. But honestly, it's like. I just try to just be me, bro. And it's like, I am from the Bay. You feel me? So it's like, you can't you can't really box me out or box me in. I don't really like being boxed in. You feel me? So it's like, you can't tell me I, I'm, I don't sound like a Bay nigga, although I'm from the Bay. You feel me? It's like, how, how does that even match? I'm from the Bay regardless. Yeah, so Not it's like, sure. you, can't, you can't take away a New York nigga and how you sound. He a New York nigga. You yeah. feel me? But here, I try to just find a way to... Uh, connect something that's familiar with everybody and not make it so personal and and i'm, I'm not and i fuck with like people's um opinion i fuck with a lot of people and what they got to say and feedback you yeah. feel me so i've been working on a lot of different shit that's more west coast sounding a little bit yeah um less more less metaphorics and just more simple you feel me something just ride and smoke to something that you can party to more so so yeah you know, I just like to just find different skills and flows and sets to just kind of create. You feel me? So, yeah. How did, like, your family react to you making music? <laughs> uh, shit, my twin fuck with it. My twin brother fuck with it. My brothers fuck with it. My All my siblings fuck with it. All my family really fuck with it. Um, it's just more so the context of the shit I create. You feel me? And, like... Moms and pops, they really old old school, so they really fuck with like funk and yeah. like they don't really fuck with rap like that. So yeah, it's so. like they like, I mean, you know, you can kinda of, you can kinda of sing, so why ain't you singing? Well, you can do this, why you ain't doing that? You yeah. know what I mean? I used to play the like guitar and violin and shit oh, like for that. Real? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you still play or like nah? I don't even play. I don't even play. My That's... brother, my little brother, he can he can play the um a little bit of the guitar, but he be on the keys and shit like that. You feel me? Um, my pops tried to do the whole Jackson Five type of thing. For real? Yeah, but it ain't work because like I was a little more stubborn because I was just like I want to I want to just kind of talk on the mic or rap or shit like that. I didn't really want to sing and hold a guitar and shit. And that shit was hurting my hands with the callus. <laughs> I was like, I'm cool. And he started a little bit too late with the guitar. I was like in my teenage years. Oh yeah, that's yeah. something you gotta learn like when you like. Yeah, like when you're like a, a two year old yeah. or some shit. You gotta, you know, violin, I tried that shit. It was cool, but. Um, that's I, tight though. Yeah, yeah. It's different. Yeah, yeah, it was different, you feel me? Um, and it was just more so like just fucking around cause I just wanted to just try something different. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, man. But they fuck with the music. They fuck with it. It's just, 
if somebody never heard a song from you, which song would you tell them to listen to? Shit. Uh, it depends on the person. If you're trying to understand who I am, I would say listen to um, uh, 1589, uh, Space Talk. Uh, that's giving like a description of who I am in a nutshell. Yeah. If you if you want to fuck with like lyrics, uh, I, I make shit something called the Spill. Um, that was on Fool's Gold. The other one's on Fool's Gold. Um, but if you want to get hyphy or some shit or some like something you just want to ride to and you feel me, bust a move real quick. Uh, you want to fuck with um, roll with it. Um, take a shot. Do it big. Yeah. If you want to work out, like I don't know, bro. Yeah. I don't really know. Something for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's yeah. your studio process like? Uh, shit. I I do the shit myself. Well, I, I do several things, bro. I shop around with different engineers. I got like four different engineers. So like, I might go to this one dude who's good at the boom bap shit. You feel me? I might go to uh, Black Dre who fuck with uh, the boy. Um, he be he be he he keep me more so grounded with the bass sound. And then I fuck with uh, uh, Reddick, and then my homegirl she does some shit in the rich, uh, TT. Um, it's just different type of engineers for different type of sounds. You feel me? So yeah. like. That's 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 on the back end, but on the front end, what I do is I either freestyle some shit on a phone or do it on a mic at the crib. Like I don't even hear the I don't even want to write. I just hear the beat first, and then like freestyle the melody, freestyle the the emotions of the song, and then just start putting the words into it. You feel me? And then like I might re go and do that shit like five hundred different times before I get it right. And then I'm done with it. Then I'm like, oh, I need to say this word a little more different. I got to pronounce this shit a little more different. I, I become my own worst critic. Yeah. Um, do you ever feel like that slows you down? It do. It do. It hella do, bro. <laughs> I got like 500 songs, I kid you not, on my laptop. Really? Yeah, yeah. I record like every day. Like, if I'm like working or doing some shit, busting a move and then coming to the crib, um, I'll be up at like shit, fucking... Five, six in the morning, making recording. songs, recording, yeah. recording. And I'm like, all right, which one is best for the studio? Which one can I remember? Which one I can memorize? All that type of shit, you feel me? So it slows me down, but I'm at a point where it's like, fuck it, bro. Like, <clears throat> I got songs where I'm kind of mumbling. Yeah. And I'm rapping words. I'm like, but everyone here, they're like, bro, that shit sounds better than the shit that you was doing in the studio. Because mm -hmm. you're too much trying to edit yourself. So I'm like, bro, just put that shit out. You feel me? So a lot of my shit that I freestyle and I don't even think about it, <clears throat> it sounds way more better. It sounds way more free. People can connect to it a little bit more better because it's like it's an emotion. It's a it's a frequency type yeah. of thing. You feel me? So definitely slow me down, bro. <laughs> now I, I mean I, I'm sure a lot of people do the same thing though. Like yeah. nobody will judge you harder than yourself. <laughs> even with me, like I'm like fuck. Right. I, the what I, I can feel like I did bad, and the person can feel that they still say it was great. I'm right. Like, I, right. <laughs> I can do better. <laughs> right. You can always have a better game. You feel yeah, me? Nah, Sometimes the sure. shots be off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, can you tell me about like a, a good experience you had growing up in Richmond? Good experience? Several. Like, uh, um, you know, you, you folk with Powell. Like, um, it's like for like a... Uh, oh, my hood, every Christmas, every Christmas... They do like a um, a Santa Claus drive, so like they go around each block, like corners. I'm in the Crescents, so they go through every circle and just pass out candies. You feel me? So like I used to like be hella happy about that shit because I got seven siblings. You feel me? And on December like 23rd or some shit like that, they'll pass candy out, or the weekend before. And you just waking up early before Christmas, it's kind of like an early gift. Yeah. Before Christmas, you feel me? <laughs> but you get a bunch of candy. Yeah. So you got seven siblings, and they give you a stocking full of candy. Y'all can be swapping them out, trading it out, and shit like that. And it's just like, you know, I mean, it's cool. Um, that's one just on some kid shit. Uh, adult shit is like, I fuck with um, like a lot of a lot of the cats from the rich. Um, it's been less violent shit popping off, um, and more camaraderie. They just did like a drive, um, damn it, this weekend with um. The cats from um, uh, um, 
I am suing them. Um, cool jar. Cool jar. Fundraisers. Yeah, they did the fundraisers. You feel me? I, I wasn't even around for that shit to, to happen. I wish I was there, mm. but it was just a beautiful thing just to see it. You feel me? Just to see the camaraderie, just to see everybody happy, niggas rapping and shit like that. It ain't that serious. People just kind of enjoying the space and the time. And like, <clears throat> that's something that niggas need. And we need to more so just kind of unite instead of fucking dividing ourselves over some goofy shit, over some cousin shit, over some, you know what I mean? Just politics that ain't really got nothing to do with everybody. Because not everybody is a fucking uh, rah-rah nigga. You feel me? Like, I did an engineer. I, I was, um, I did a, um, I did a, I, I, tr- I, I did a test run with an engineer. And I ain't know he was from the rich. Mm-hmm. Nerd cat. You feel me? Hella cool, hella uh, introvert and shit like that. Found out he's from the rich. He was like, "Well, where are you from?" I said, "I'm from the rich too," and he was kind of like, like thrown off a little bit. And when he seen I was more jokey and more just kind of just chill with it, then he opened up. Mm-hmm. But I understood it was like, bro, it's based off our environment. You mm-hmm. can't really open up and shit like that and be yourself, cause a uh, niggas think that you soft or niggas gonna try to rob you or niggas gonna try to do some weird shit. Yeah. So it's just like I'm kind of overseeing that type of situation. Not even just in the red, just in general, because that shit is getting corny. You yeah. feel me? Nah, I, 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 it's funny because like with me being first, people always be like, "Where you from?" I'll be like, "Man, I'm for like, like <laughs> yeah, I'm from South Richmond, like right. the end of the day." But like, bro, like I'm not worried about like yeah. what yeah. side. Like to me, what side you're from doesn't matter at right. all. Like I'm not involved in the street shit. Like, yeah, I don't care. Right, right. You got right. good music. Right. Can, can I help you? Right. <laughs> like, exactly. That's what you feel right. me like. <laughs> And I've had that conversation with plenty of artists for Richmond, and they're like, "Bro, I understand." I'm like, "Bro, I'm not mm-hmm. an enemy. Like, I'm mm-hmm. an ally. Like, but I, I can understand why he was kind of like, right? You feel me? Because you can be. You right. like, you don't right. want to say like exactly because like, <laughs> he, he he was from Central. Yeah. You feel me? And I was like, "Run from the South Side. You feel me? The, the safe side, South Side. We all cool on this yeah. side." And he was just like, "Bro, I'm from Central, bro," and like. So, bro, I feel you, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I get it, man. Yeah, bro. nah, for sure. Like, it's all love. Yeah, but I, but you're right, though. We need to be willing to work together more and yeah. and, and and help each other reach to the next level. Right. Um, I want to ask you, like, you got the, the red dot on your forehead. Like, what's that about? <laughs> uh, shit, man. Uh, uh, it's funny, because, like, everybody asks me that shit. And uh, one cat was like, nigga, what's that red dot on your head? What that shit mean? And I was like, nigga, what's that, what's that shit on your face mean? Nigga, you got a tattoo and shit on your face. And he was like, nigga, at the end of the day, I'm going to explain it to you. But he was like, nigga, at the end of the day, you a nigga. Don't ever get that shit. You ain't Indian, you a nigga. And I was just like, bro, this nigga is the most dumbest nigga I ever heard. But um, I get it, and I forgive his ignorance. He don't know no better. <clears throat> a lot of people don't know no better. But the red dot, um, it go into some Hindu shit, but not really. Um... It just means you, in a nutshell, because I don't want to get too preachy with it, but in a nutshell, it's just your third eye. And um, I used to, I don't used to, I actually fast. I fast like, <clears throat> like three times a week. That, actually, I used to fast, I ain't gonna lie. I used to fast three times a week, eat four days. But now I'm trying to do it like uh, eat um three times a day and fast four times a week. Like, no no food, no nothing. Maybe just water, you're getting dehydrated. But anyway, when you fast and you meditate, um, there's a point in your, there's a point where you get to, they say you see God, <clears throat> and you get to tap into that creative flow, and you get to tap into tif- different, like, realities and dimensions and, like, kind of be ahead of the curve and just more so an enlightenment type of thing. You feel me? So, like, um, not a lot of people see this on my face, it's a little bit disarming too when people see it because it's like okay when they see you with that they kind of treat you with a different type of uh, energy like respect um white folks black folks don't matter where you go they kind of just treat you different because they see the dot and they not every culture know what it means but it means something in high respect you know me so uh for me it's just third eye i seen god yeah um parents is christian you feel me but like you know, it's just I just adopt a lot of different things in my journey, uh, traveling the world, leaving the states, seeing different places, yeah. meeting different people, getting a different meaning in life. So, yeah, it just means you just tap into God, man. Be one with him or her <laughs> or it. 
how important was was it for you? You feel me to get out the city and to see other shit? Cause you know, I think that was something that I think that is something that holds a lot of people back in Northern California in general. Not I, I wouldn't go generalize it, just say Richmond, but like some people from the Bay yeah, never seen nothing else. So that's yeah, all we know, you yeah, know. But yeah. that. That can hinder your perception oh. of what the world is if you've never seen nothing else. Right. Yeah, I had a. Uh, I started traveling when I turned 19. I got my passport at 20. And um, traveling is like the best thing a, a black person can do. A person in general can do. But a black person, a nigga, to be precise, to be exact. Because I don't think there's nothing wrong with the word nigga if you really understand what it means. Yeah. But, like, proud to be a nigga at the end of the day. A black person should travel because it opens up your, your mindset. It allows you to come out your comfort zone. It allows you to expose yourself to see who you truly are. Um, when you go to different cities and shit, <laughs> you get to really be who you are. You feel me? So if you kind of um, shy, you're going to be shy in the next city, next state. You get to leave all the bullshit behind, though. Like, you get to leave, like, your, 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 your pain. You get to leave all the type of shit and enjoy yourself for one good day, one good week, one good month to truly see who you really are. You feel me? And it might be pretentious, but at the end of the day, that's who you get to become if you learn to just travel more and you bring that shit back home. Wisdom come with traveling, bro. Like, I left the States. I got a story of my homeboy. He went to, uh, when I went to, I took my little brother for his uh, 18th birthday, it was he 18? He yeah. was 21. I was like, bro, I can't I can't respect you. You ain't got no passport, right? That's what you said? Yeah, that's what I said to him. <laughs> you feel me? He got a passport, right? Yeah. And I said, all right, where you want to go? You feel me? Let's go somewhere. He was like, hey, let's go to Cambodia. Just some random ass Cambodian and shit. Yeah. I was like, all right, let's go. You feel me? Fuck it. We went out there, and I was like, hey, we'll go out there, bro. I'm going to have these bitches feed us grapes. Like, I manifested that type of shit. Like, I kept saying it to him on some playful shit. He got, ha, ha, I said, bro, you don't understand, bro. When you leave the States, whatever you into, whatever you believe in, it hypens. It's something like a spell over this world and this country. Like, they put grids over niggas to where, like, your mind ain't right. When you go to somewhere else, everybody fuck with you. You magnify it to everybody else. And whatever you manifest will happen. So I went out there for his birthday eating crickets and going all type of shit, crazy shit, with this thing called a lady bar. It's a place where, like, basically a bunch of prostitutes and shit like that, right? But they're not prostitutes. They got to find a way to live. It is what it is, yeah. right? But it's a bar. It's like a long-ass strip in uh, in Cambodia. It fucking not pin the state. It's like Sacramento or the state of the country or whatever. Yeah. Um, we go there white niggas and white people there with the females the women just all come to me and my brother cause we the only <laughs> black ones yeah. there and shit like that he got locks and shit and he's just loving them or whatever right I, it's hella cheap out there too so like it was like 16 it was like 45 cents for a beer you feel me fucking 20 dollars for like two fifth of henny you feel me I'm buying out the whole bar I'm balling yeah <laughs> I'm, in I'm in Vegas you yeah. feel me I feel yeah. like I'm balling right and a tour guy, he comes out, he was like, we ain't got no cake out here, but shit, we got some fruit. Bro, the bitches came out with grapes. Yeah, really? <laughs> and they Liter started eating <laughs> grapes. You know what I mean? Literal grapes. Yeah, they did, yeah. right. And they sung him happy birthday, feeding us grapes, and he's sitting there like, what the fuck? Bruh. But his mind opened up once he left and came back, mm -hmm. you feel me? And my homeboy went to Tanzania by himself. He was paranoid, he had his backpack with him. And this nigga was like, he was like, the people was like, bro, we ain't gonna steal your shit. Leave your shit. We ain't gonna steal it. Just come outside to the pool. We can have fun. He was like, bro, you sure nobody gonna steal it? Like, we ain't gonna steal it. First three days, he was paranoid, thinking he gonna get his head cut off, chopped, murdered, yeah. dead. After that, he's free. You feel me? So it was like, it's best to just travel because you get to see if it's really racist. You get to see if it's really terrorism. Yeah. That's in the out the country. But in the States, it's like that too. Leave leave, leave out your comfort zone. I got niggas that ain't never left the hood. Yeah. And you they don't never want to go. And they like, bro, if I can't bring my peace with me, I don't want to go. I'm like, bro, if I got to bring my peace with me, I don't want to go. You feel me? And it's like, why you got to always bring your shit with you just to make sure you feel secure about your insecurities? 
leave the place. Go somewhere that you ain't never been. Open up you your mind. Open up your shoulders. Yeah. Nah, for sure. I, and you're right, bro. Like, that's... um. That's something that a lot of people deal with and experience, yes. especially coming up out here. Because right. like a lot of a lot of people are killing each other, right. so they don't really <laughs> they think that it's like that everywhere. everywhere. It's like nah, but but like but but that's all I tell people this stuff, especially people from NorCal. Once you go to these other places, nobody knows you. You don't have any problems. <laughs> yeah, no <don't> smoke. <laughs> There's no smoke out there for you. Like, you're good. <laughs> Little Ray Ray now is not finna pull up on you. you they know don't know me? where you are. You're good. They don't know you. You yeah. feel me? So, and, I, and, and you know, you are what you gravitate towards, too. You feel me? So, I think people just need to kind of just open up their mind and just kind of just be free, bro. Where are we from? Niggas don't even leave the, the, the state nor the, leave the state or the region, you let alone the country. Yeah. You know? What what are some of the pros and cons you've experienced um, with being an artist? Uh, insecurities. Everybody really killing you. Niggas is niggas is telling about how how you can do this better, but they don't do music themselves. Um, niggas trying to box you in. Um, being rejected a hundred times by different label heads, different A and R's, different people that's like, Oh, I like your shit, but you need to do this with your image. I'm not changing my image for you niggas. You feel me? And or you corporate folks. Yeah. You feel me? Um it's just a lot of it's a lot of people that doesn't understand uh the, the blood, sweat and tears of it. If you're a real artist, if you're a nigga that's just going there and getting high and don't really appreciate the art and understand how you manipulating the matrix and you manipulating um frequencies and how you changing shit just by the by, by your words yeah then yeah this ain't for you you feel me but for niggas that really understand what this shit really is and understand that this shit is like it's like gospel like it's like you get i don't even want to get too deep <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to hear <laughs> I ain't gonna lie I'm like shit I'm like you got some good you got some good shit you speaking yeah, of right. niggas don't understand bro like you can put you can put you can speak words in existence and everybody know that like you know what I mean that whole little book the secrets type shit but like the shit is real cause it's like it's, it's coming from your heart it's coming from a frequency and the more you everyone has a destination or everyone has a path that you can go through. If you speak that shit, it's going to choose the door that you walk through. If you keep creating more energy towards it, it's going to turn into a um, like an emotion. So you create momentum towards it. Yeah. A lot of niggas be putting death and rest in peace to every fucking Bay Area rapper or every rapper that died. But a lot of people be putting death in their songs. And I be listening to their songs and niggas be saying that they going to die. Niggas be saying certain shit. So it's like, if you're aware of that type of shit, Understand that your pen or your heart or whatever you do as an artist is going to affect you, your family, your friends, everybody that you put on there. So, and that's another reason why there's a lot of pushback with my shit because I can go there, but I choose not to because I try to create shit for the future. I don't like putting shit out about the moment, aka the past. I like to live in the future or the moment that's going to propel and, and actually help people around me. You feel yeah. me? No, I feel that for sure. I think, I mean, you, you gotta be like that. I mean, and and I think that's one of the biggest divides in the Northern Cal music scene. People love gangster shit, but you're right, though. Yeah, yeah. Rapping about death and shit happened to you, it's right. like, are you, is that you could be, people are actually manifesting it. Yeah, yeah. If you listen to it long enough, too, I mean, I, I, bro, it's a promise that is being manifested, to be honest with you. Like, when you become aware of it, that shit is literally like you talking death. Now I fuck with the rah rah shit though. Let's not get to. I have rah rah shit in my shit, but I try not to say I'm gonna murder somebody. I try not to say anything. I just try to say, hey, I keep a something on me. If a nigga acting phony, I'm just yeah. using that for yeah. you know what I mean. But like, I don't never try to say I'm gonna just go out and just do some shit to some nigga. You feel me? Or go do that to somebody. Or if this happened to me, this is gonna. I don't try to speak that because I've seen too many niggas. I was eleven. 12 when I seen my first death. You feel me? So it's like, and that nigga was rapping. You feel me? So it's like, I just don't play around with that type of shit, bro. Nah, for sure. It ain't nothing to play with, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
outside of music, what do you like to do? Uh, I do a lot of things, bro. I try to stay creatively busy. Um, I like to uh, work on um, videography, um, invest in my own um, production company, and uh, to study how I can find different creative outlets because sometimes you can't put your whole life in rap. Yeah. You feel me? I like to study film and get to connect with like video people that can like make that happen and just put my vision to reality more yeah. so. You feel me? So I just like I just like anything that's creative. Any art if it's painting, if it's drawing, if it's scribbling, if it's like fucking poetry, battle rap, <coughs> fucking Running, jogging, anything that can free my mind and just make it more creative. I fuck with it. Yeah, you know, I rock with that. Yeah. If you could relive your life, is there anything you would change? Hell no. Keep it all the same? Keep it funky? Nah, nah. I, 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 I'll probably still be... Um, I would, the only thing I would... Mm, only thing I would change is let, listen to less niggas and appreciate more bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said I thought we could all relate to that one for sure. Cause these niggas try to talk you out of the situation because they hating. You feel me? Niggas, niggas that throw. I didn't realize niggas threw salt in the game. You feel me? For sure. I never really peeped it. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? So it's like, hey, bro, you shouldn't do that. Hey, I know you're working on this, bro. I know you're doing this to music and shit, but let's go out and do this. Nah, it's supposed to stay more disciplined. Yeah. Because them niggas ain't doing what I'm doing. Discipline is key to that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And knowing how to tell people no. Exactly. Can't be no can't be no people pleasing, you feel me? <laughs> At all. What advice do you have um, for people that are trying to get into music and be creative? Uh, don't be afraid to be you. Don't be afraid to be corny. Don't be afraid to be lame. Don't be afraid to step out of the genre. Don't be afraid to, if you into country, get into country. If you into pop, get into pop. Like, find your lane, find your identity, and be kind of, just be, just just embrace yourself. Um, embrace yourself, be open to Criticism, but don't give a fuck about those, these niggas and, and, and these bitches. Just be you as, as much as possible and everything will work out. You feel me? And shit, believe in God or whatever you fucking believe in, but just believe in something that's going to kind of give you a uh, a foundation to stand on. And don't sell your ass for fucking for fame because the shit ain't worth it. Yeah. <laughs> They're they going to try to how you sell your ass for it too. No. I agree. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> so, is it is there anything you want to discuss before you get out of here? Uh, shit. I think I kind of covered some of it. Um, I for every artist that fuck with me, I fuck with you. For every artist that want to fuck with me, I fuck with you. I embrace everybody. Um, I don't judge people by their music. I don't judge people by the things that they create. Um, try not to be so judgmental. Try to be more, more, more. I ain't trying to get too religious, but try to have a spiritual eye when you do shit. You feel me? And live life with a balance. Like, don't put off a phone call from the from from your family. Don't put off um, living in the moments and actually embracing love. Don't put off. Uh, cutting niggas off that need to be cut off from your circle because they might hurt you. Um, just don't put certain things off and just live. try to live a balanced life. And for every artist, that's difficult because this shit is not balanced. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? And don't be ashamed to not have the money to actually do what you can do. Don't be ashamed to, to not be able to, 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 just keep going. You feel me? Just keep going and live a balanced ass life and love. Love your life. Love people around you. Cause the shit is getting uglier. Also, what I would say is every song I always drop, it always seems like it's it's it, it's it's a uh, weird shit happens. Like I write shit to where like I made a song called Agent, right? And I said, um, how you how you a stepper? Um, 
how you accept, how you a big stepper, but you signing out for Davis. Um, Matrix in this bitch, the world is changing. Uh, how the fuck you claim you real, but ain't rapping reparations. Mm. Blow a hundred stacks. Uh, you blow a hundred stacks. Around, uh, blow a hundred stacks and boasted that you made it. Just to boast around broke niggas, man. That shit is dangerous. Everybody got a Judas. <laughs> Even family related. They treat you like you God, son. Because they think you Satan. You know, watch out for these fucking agents. To me, when I write certain things, it has it, it start happening, like I said earlier. Um, when I started writing shit about reparations, then it, it was a talk about reparations. Yeah, so Gavin Newsom was talking about that right now. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, and I wrote that a, a few months ago. I always found things that I write about that end up happening. You feel me? Uh, I wrote in my crazy ass artist mind. I wrote I wrote the championship team Ghetto Curry of of 2021 mm. because I I embraced the ghetto curry situation and I was writing about everything. It was like I made a song called Switching Teams. Draymond and punched this nigga in the stump and yeah. it, he didn't switch up. You yeah. feel me? As much as people don't want to understand that. So it's like you can write your reality into existence. And you can you can write as a prophet or you can write for profit. It just depends on what you want to do. So always keep that in mind. Have a spiritual like view towards everything everything you do is spiritual and i ain't here to preach i ain't here to teach i'm just here to be a light and that's it feel me shit <laughs> I, i'm rocking with that heavy i ain't gonna lie i did i, I gotta end it on that note <laughs> um once again bro i appreciate you pulling up definitely a dope interview i think people will see you as a light and will get some insight from this for sure, for sure. um give me your instagram one more time so i know where to follow you at ghetto curry that's it. Uh, it's you gonna find a guy with the half mask on, half mask off. You feel me? You don't know if he a villain or a good guy. You feel me? So, that's it. Hell yeah, you <laughs> locked in with the innovators. You already know we got the best interviews right here. Ghetto Curry in the building. I appreciate you pulling up. For sure. Appreciate you, bro. You're locked in with the innovators. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell.